You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And we are going to get this show on the road because I'm super excited to welcome my guest. Today is a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up. Be amazing. Be you. Do you. All right, guys. I'm welcoming Tim Bowie to the show. Welcome, Tim. Ah, uh, nice to be here. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'm going to tell our listeners a little bit about you, and then we're going to jump right into this and start talking about what you got going on. So you guys sit back. This bio is great. All right. So Tim Bowie showed his passion for piano and music at a young age. After performing throughout high school, he auditioned and was accepted in the United States Army Band. After his honorable discharge, he moved to Nashville, where he became a studio musician playing for artists needing a pianist in the recording studio. He was offered and he accepted a gig to perform at Oslo, Norway in, with the country band, the Eddie Thompson Band. When the two-month gig ended, he decided to give the International Piano Bar Circuit a try and remained in Oslo for 20 years. Tim then moved to the Netherlands to be one of the main piano entertainers at the world's largest piano bar called Crazy Pianos. One of his piano partners was the creator of the TV show called The Voice. Since 1986, Tim has traveled and performed in over 40 countries in venues such as piano bars, cruise ships, nightclubs, concert halls, international television, halftime shows, and more. Tim set the world on fire by attempting and setting two Guinness World Records for nonstop marathon piano playing. The first world record was 61 hours and three minutes. One year later, he performed at Rum Runners in Wilmington, North Carolina, where he performed for 63 hours and 11 minutes. He's the founder of the original Piano Entertainers Convention based out of New Orleans, which includes piano entertainers from all around the world. He's trained over 300 piano players who make a career as professional piano entertainers. When you see Tim perform, he jokes that, hey, man, you better put on your seatbelt because I'm about to blow your mind. The shows Tim <laughs> Bowie performs is high energy, positive, and most of all, true fun times. He's considered by many as one of the world's premier piano entertainers and, and is asked to perform in the top piano venues around the planet. Tim Bowie, along with his business partner, Andy Shinsky, created their own business in February 2020 called USA Dueling Pianos. This is a company that will provide piano entertainers for top high-end corporate events through the United States featuring dueling pianos as well as solo. Tim Bowie has 36 piano and entertainers. In 2018, he signed with MGM Casinos. The I can't even say this. The Beau Rivage, this is French, in Biloxi, Mississippi, Very as well much. as, there you go, as the Gold Strike in Tanika, Mississippi, as a main headliner performer. He has recently been performing all over the Caribbean in Aruba, St. Martin, Jamaica, just to name a few, on many cruise ships such as Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian Cruise Lines. By way of Wilmington, North Carolina, Tim now lives in New Orleans, Louisiana, with his wife of 21 years, along with her three teens. So welcome to the show, Tim. I love oh, it. Oh, man. Nice being here. Boy, that, that bio sounds good. I'm it a, does, I'm, doesn't it? Boy, I didn't sit on the couch very much, I can tell you that. I, I gathered that. I know I was reading all of that, and I'm like, goodness, you've got a lot going on. So I'm thinking at some point on a cruise ship, we're going to see you at some time somewhere, right? I don't know. I, I think uh, we're not going to be on cruises in quite a while. Probably not frank, for a while. Yeah. Cruise, cruise, cru playing on cruise ships has changed a little bit over the years. It used to be boisterous and fun, and uh, – we live in such a corporate world, especially in the entertainment world. Uh, it's it's taken a lot of the fun and the zest out of what we do. But I'm very grateful that I've had that opportunity. And, uh, you know, if I ever asked again, I sure would, uh, you know, if, especially these days, I, I would go jump on a tugboat right now and play if they asked me. Right. <laughs> Right. I'm not picky. I'm very grateful for everything that comes my way. You know. Yeah, I think it's all uh, stepping. I love this. You've you've had so many great things. I mean, you've traveled all over the place. You've gotten. You've had just some really amazing opportunities to take your art and just be able to, you know, travel with that and have an impact. And so I love this. So I'm looking at this, and you were, you know, your bio, and you were, and you were talking about how in high school you were in band. So did you just kind of or in band playing piano? Did you just kind of come out of the womb playing piano? <laughs> Like, was this like you were you born know, a pianist? Enough, I, I didn't put this in my bio, but it's pretty cool. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. If all your sports fans out there, I played uh, about five years of baseball with Michael Jordan. We were on the same team. Uh, uh, and uh, 
We used, these were the days where you were best friends one night. Next day, you, you got in a wrestle with each other. And the next day, you're spending a night with each other. You didn't go out and uh, end each other's lives. So uh, I was a, a all-star left-hand baseball pitcher, believe it or not, uh, as a, a eight, uh, in the eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, my baseball, I, I could throw a ball. And I, in my brain, I was going to be a sports, but if, deep in my heart, and I'll be honest with you, uh, not everybody has this, so forgive me if I, uh, I had a very supportive, loving mother and father who told me as a young boy, four or five years old, I can do anything I wanted to, and I believed it. And that support and knowing that and now I'm, I'm 56 years of age now, knowing how many people, young children, do not have that support breaks my heart. But I happened to be one of the lucky ones, won the lottery and had parents who supported me. So that fastball, that seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth grade fastball, it was fast until the ninth grade. That fastball wasn't as fast as it was in the seventh and eighth grade. That curveball, people were hitting on me out of the park. But my piano was getting stronger and stronger. I was taking piano lessons. Uh, of course, I was getting attention in the school. To, uh, at, the, at the time, I was, you know, girls liked me, and I thought that was pretty cool. I was playing on local TV shows in my hometown. I was on the front page, or maybe not the front page, but some little story about the piano player from Wilmington, you know, Tim Bowie, and that. So around that 10th grade, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I did. And Jennifer, I decided in the 10th grade, you know what? I'm going to go a different route because I did have a scholarship offer for piano. And I turned it down. And after graduating high school, I went into United States Army Band. Uh, I auditioned and I was accepted. So that was my kind of my way to jump out of the family nest egg. But I will tell you this, there is no doubt I knew what I was going to do around that ninth grade. I knew I knew I was going to play piano because I can't explain it. I'm not good at anything else. I can't, I'm not good with a hammer. I'm not good painting. I'm not good. Uh, well, I can cook a little bit. Uh, In the mid seventies, I had a vision that I was going to travel the world. I did not know how I was going to do it. I love learning about other cultures and countries and comparing them against America and all. And so I knew somehow once I came out of high school, maybe college or whatever, I wanted to travel the world. So 1982, I graduated high school. I auditioned a year before and I entered the United States Army Band, and I just knew this is it, buddy. I'm getting ready to travel. I'm getting ready to see things. And I ended up in Alabama. <laughs> so when I came out of the Army Band, after four years, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and started playing in studios. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was doing major projects in the studio, but Church groups were hiring me to play piano on their album, you know, little country singers here or there. And uh, about a year there, I was asked to go to Oslo, Norway with that country band mentioned in my bio, the Eddie Thompson band. And once I heard that, I heard, this is what I heard. We have a gig for you in Oslo, Norway, but the money's not that good, but they'll take care of your airfare and your hotel. And I'm like, what? Count me in. I'm there. Here's where it gets crazy. Um, we did a two-month contract in Oslo at a club, which took me three months to learn how to say, Jennifer, get ready for this. The name of the club was Gamle Christianus Tortovis Jesivri. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> People would ask me, where are you playing? I'm like, I don't know how to say it, but I know where the building is. Yeah. Gamle Christianus Tortovis Jesivri was the name of it. Well, once the two-month gig came to an end, the night before, I pulled the five-piece band together and said, guys, listen to me. You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm staying. I'm young. I'm making money. I have other people wanting me to play at their piano bars that I've met. I have work. I have a place to stay. They thought I was crazy, but I knew exactly, without a doubt, much as I love my family back in North Carolina, much as I miss them and all my friends and 
I was young. I knew America was not going anywhere. As long as I was alive, I was going to be fine. So I, uh, I ended up staying. They, again, they thought I was out of my mind. And believe me, the day that they left and I stayed, I kind of thought I was out of my mind too. But then I, I play a couple months at a piano bar in Oslo, like George's Piano Bar, or Baron Baronessen, is some famous bars over there. And then an agent would meet me and say, hey, uh, can you go to Sweden this month? Can you go to Netherlands? Can, can you go to Finland? Can you go to Germany? And that ball just started rolling where my reputation got bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, clubs around the world were requesting me to come and perform. And that's how it all took place. Uh, but as my daddy's favorite saying is, who's no longer on earth, uh, God rest his soul, because I love him and I miss him dearly as well as my mother. He's been gone 10 years. He had a favorite saying that we lived from, from the time I was a little boy up until I was a young man. You cannot ride the bus until you buy the ticket. That's the expression that was instilled in my mind. And I'm going to repeat that again. You cannot ride the bus until you buy the ticket. In other words, if you don't go out on the limb and try to you know, pick that cherry, that cherry's not going to come to you. And that's what I've always done. And a lot of times it's backfired and got me some trouble here and there, business-wise. But that I'm, I'm going to, I have no regrets. Love it. When I went, when I joined that army and ended up in Alabama for four years, actually a little less than four years, because there was an early out program and I jumped all over that too. So I was in the army about three years and three months, actually. Uh, I knew one way or another I was going to see the world. And uh, since then, uh, I've, I've been in 43 countries. And when I stop and think about it, especially with this five months of a shutdown in the COVID-19, I mean, I, I just can't believe the life I've lived. I, I feel like I was on a jet rockets and now I'm, uh, I have uh, ice cream stuck in my feet. <laughs> it's an expression. That's a, that's a good way to put it. I love that. I love it. But I, yeah, you've had an incredible, I mean, just, I, I love that you've been able to experience all these. And like I said, take being able to use your gift and your art. And I love that you said that, you know, you knew very early on that this is what you were going to do. I think that that is an incredible gift when you know that you have a talent and you're able to really capitalize on that in some way to give back. You know what I mean? Which leads me into, I want to talk about these world, these Guinness world records that you have, because sure, sure. I want to, I, how did this come about? I would love to hear how this kind of came, came about for you. Well, uh, around 2002, I was performing at a piano bar and all you Dutch friends out there hear this, you're going to laugh at me because I've never said it right. And it's a city called Greveningen. Greveningen. <laughs> and it's a beach community outside of Den Haag, or the Hague, where the World Court exists. That piano bar is called Crazy Pianos. And at one time, they had 11 to 13 international top piano entertainers from around the world. I personally consider it the best piano bar I've ever been part of. And uh, the piano bar was called Crazy Pianos. Dueling pianos it was, but literally the audience... Uh, it could, uh, the room, uh, I don't know the exact number, I'm going to guess, the room would pack with 500 to 750 people a night, seven nights a week. And the piano bar show there was more of a concert than a piano bar. And these Dutch, man, they party like, wow, just as soon as we're wore out from partying, that's when they're, they're starting. But around 2002, I heard about a friend of mine from Portland, Oregon, who set a world record. I choose not to mention his name as I did not want to embarrass him. But I heard through the grapevine that he played continuously for 26 hours nonstop. I'm like, oh my Lord, how do you play 26 hours? I don't know if I could do that or not, you know? And uh, that old saying, you can't ride the bus until you buy the ticket. I started writing emails to Guinness in London. Uh, asking about the rules and regulations of doing a piano marathon. I originally asked to do dueling pianos. They did not recognize that as an official world record, but solo marathon piano plan, they did accept. And I knew the world record was 26 hours by my, uh, my buddy out in Portland. And when I went to do the real homework and the nitty gritty of the work, Sadly enough, they informed me they've never heard of this individual, that maybe he did a world record, but he did not do an official Guinness world record 
through Guinness. Hence, I don't want to mention his name. I couldn't believe it. I felt like, oh my God, I've been, well, I've been, I've been lied to all these years. But also I found out the world record was around 43 hours, not 26. I'm like, there's no way, man. So I went to my bosses there at Crazy Piano and talked about doing a world record. And uh, we were in the process of making that happen when, uh, sadly enough, I was received a uh, phone call from my family that my mother had been diagnosed with dementia and, and pre-Alzheimer's. So my wife, uh, Rita, who's Norwegian from uh, Norway, we, uh, we packed it up, took our child, and moved back to Wilmington, North Carolina within a few months. I never gave up on the fact that somehow i don't know how i'm going to break 43 there's no way i don't think i could do it but and then 2005 comes along this was a couple of year, years later i'm playing at a club in wilmington north carolina called wilson's restaurant it's a uh, kind of like a dave and busters and that big tsunami in asia hit and it broke my heart i, I couldn't believe the images i was seeing on the internet the news and all and the owner said tim I, he goes we have to let's do a fundraiser do you have any ideas i said got a great one i'm going to set a world record right here or at least i will attempt a world record i don't know if i can do it or not he asked me what it was i said it was 43 hours he thought i was crazy and so i started a process once again of applying to do an official world record at guinness and basically the rules were officially, you cannot play a song under two minutes, Jennifer. You can't play a song over four minutes. You can't lift your hands off the piano more than 30 seconds. Wow. You can't repeat a song every till every four hours. Every song has to be recognizable. Uh, you were allowed a, an eight hour, every eight hours, we were allowed what you call a hygiene break. And I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but uh, also, we had a choice to fly representatives from Guinness there, or we had a choice to uh, have people from your community, such as doctors, attorneys, uh, officials, who notarize that everything they are witnessing is legitimate and official. I had a song judge to make sure I didn't repeat. I had a hand judge uh, to make sure my hands were on the sec uh, keyboard uh, no more than 30 seconds. I had a repeat song judge. I, I had a massage team there. I had a pan and bucket team that would wow. come in and wow. buckets and old. So, so to make a long story short, two months later, there I am, starting my official Guinness World Record at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I thought, this is surreal. I can't believe this is really happening. And to be honest with you, I didn't really think I could do 43 hours. The whole point was just trying to raise attention to the cause of the tsunami and do the best I could. If I didn't make it, so be it. Well, that old, you can't ride the bus till you buy the ticket, and that old stubborn Southern mentality came out, in, I reckon. Uh, and uh, 25 hours into it, I felt like a spring chicken. By this time, the story had blown up. Now there's three or four radio stations there. I'm on the news constantly. CNN sent a, somebody from Atlanta, Georgia, flew him in. And there I am uh, all over. Uh, basically, I'm on CNN all over the, the world. Uh, 30 hours into it, I'm feeling good. 35 hours, I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm nine hours away from a world record. There's no way I'm coming off this unless I die. About 40 hours into it, I start seeing dead people. Literally, my I, I can't explain it. Uh, if you ever, I did read some stories on our our, our 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 dear POWs and what they went through. So what I did was nothing compared to what they've done through. Can't even compare. I was seeing dead people. I was seeing three or four of people I couldn't speak. My my language became gibberish. Uh, the piano playing was still clear. I was still uh, still there, but I was I was hurting. 43 hours came into it. I was uh, an hour away and boom, I set the world record. I had 44 hours. That's when I really got the energy boost. 
And I went to 53 hours and 10 minutes was my first, wow. what I thought was a world record. By this time, I couldn't speak. I It's hard. Your, your brain has a meltdown, maybe like a computer that's overloaded, Jennifer. Um, I was in tears. I mean, I cried like a baby. I mean, the whole community came out. It, it made big news. It really touched the people. I had no idea I would get that response. So two days later, I'm on the way to WECT Channel 6 in Wilmington, North Carolina for an interview. I was called by Carl Davis, the former general manager who's deceased now, to let me know. Guinness has contacted him. They made a horrible mistake. The Guinness World Record was not 43 hours. It was 56 hours. Oh, wow. I missed the Guinness World Record on their mistake. They apologized. And the rules are, if you fail a Guinness World Record within one year, you are not allowed to try it for one year. In other words, uh, you know, if you, if you fail an attempt, you are not legally supported by Guinness to do it. At least you have to wait one year, 365 days. Because of their mistake, they gave me the green light to do it anytime I wanted to in the one year period. So <laughs> two weeks later, I was mad. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was mad. It's, and before I go any farther, if you ever ever watch wrestling, one of my heroes as a kid, I know it's a Southern thing and I apologize if you, people laugh at me, go ahead. I just loved Ric Flair, the wrestler. Woo, Ric Flair, if you know what I mean. He's a wrestler, very flamboyant. So I had that Ric Flair Emmy. Two weeks later, Jennifer, I'm at the piano again, attempting my first Guinness Book of World Record, actually, because I refused to lose. They wasn't going to keep me down. And if you ever saw, saw the movie Cool Hand Luke, mm -hmm. I loved that movie with Paul Newman. Mm -hmm. But to make a long story short, I, I uh, that particular record, I did 61 hours and three minutes. That's an official Guinness World Record, which I have my certificate. Uh, i be honest with you. One year later, I did a 63-hour one, 11 minutes. The 63-hour one, 40 hours into it, I broke my right index finger. Oh my goodness. Uh, my, knuckle, my knuckle came out of my my finger, out of the skin, and protruded out. And uh, we didn't know what to do 40 hours into it. And I knew I wasn't stopping. So we duct taped it, put some ice cream sticks on it and duct taped it. And I kept pushing. But it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I will never do it again. I'm proud of it because my children say what you will for the rest of eternity, no matter what happens, I did Guinness World Records, and they were associated with music and the piano, and that's what my my goal was. And we raised a lot of money for for that tsunami. Uh, and the following year, that six to three hours, I raised a lot of a lot of money for the uh, March of Dimes American Red Cross uh, for our uh, our poorer communities in Wilmington, North Carolina. We donated a lot of foods, uh, food. We paid rent for a lot of people. We uh, provided our uh, you know, money for food and so forth. You get the point. Uh, yeah. But uh, so I'm very proud of what I did and they've paid off. I mean, uh, now when people announce me and I come to the club, matter of fact, the other night I was a guest piano player four hours away at a brand new club that opened in Columbus, Mississippi. And I show up just to play a couple hours for the folks. And there's a big sign, you know, two time Guinness World Record, Tim Bowie. So it's paid off for me professionally in marketing and so forth. But more than that, there's an inner pride that I have that I did something unique. And yeah. how many, one more thing, how many piano players have I met? And I've met hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds around the world. One day, Bowie, they tell me, I'm thinking I'm going to beat your world record. I'm like, go ahead, go for it, brother. Knock yourself out. I, I support you the whole way. Because talk is cheap, man. Talk is cheap. And I believe this. I'm no better than my neighbor or anybody down the street. But daggone it. There's two types of people, those who sit on the couch and those that get up and try to do something because life is short. Life is precious and short. And that's what I'm proud of. I love it. You could have ran this podcast, Tim. That's exactly what I say all the time. I love it. What an incredible yeah. story. I love it. I love it. And not one, but two. I, I think that's so impressive. And not only that, when you were talking about your kids, just the, the, the there's so many, you know, because they always talk about kids 
they it's not what you tell them. They watch what you do. They watch the work ethic. They watch what you do. And so you have just really in that taught them some incredible skills of just persistence and tenacity. And not only that, going after something. I think that's incredible. When you were talking about making mistakes earlier, you know, we all make mistakes. And I think that's the beauty of learning things is that you have to like fail forward to success. You've got to fall a few times to reach that pinnacle of success. So I think it's incredible that you're able to do what you love and transpose that into, you know, into this art and, but give back to the community. And you took this whole thing and did this charity event and, and you benefit and other people benefit. So it's really a win-win for all. So I think it's an incredible story. And Thank you for sharing all that. I love it. I love it. And so, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, you created this other business just recently, dueling panels. Of course, we're not, it's hard to really do anything with COVID these days. So, I mean, I, I know, I mean, and I'm sitting here, Chris, in my background, my producer, he's in the, in the music industry and, and entertainment industry. And so, everybody's just, you know, affected by this whole situation that we're going through. So I admire, you know, your, your persistence and tenacity and just getting out there and really trying to keep things moving as, as best as possible. So I do want to ask you some fun questions. I always like to do this because I think it's fun just to kind of sure. bring a different side to the, to the podcast. So these, I didn't put in the questions for you. They're different. So are you a morning or a night person, Tim? I get up about six in the morning. If I'm not working, I'm, I'm in bed by 11. Uh, I get a cup of coffee. I put on my headphones, I come down my uh, little piano, and I do scales for about 20 minutes, gets my brain going. I play piano every morning. I don't know. It's my addiction. It's my drug. So, uh, yeah, I am definitely a, a morning person. I, I, I take care of business early in the morning, and I, I try to get up, and I get my brain going, and I'm up, I'm up and at them. I love so. it. Love it. Okay. Cat or dog person, Tim? Oh, that was easy. I'm a dog person. All right, in fact, awesome. I have a shit zoo, and his name is Memphis. I love it. I love it. And what would you say is your favorite food? My favorite food, that on, he just threw me for a loop. It's not steak. I'm not a big steak guy. I'm a big fresh salad eater. I love salad. Salad's good. I love salad. Yeah, love. salad's good. All right. And then my next fun question I want to ask you really quick here. If you could be any character superhero for a day, what would you pick? Hmm. I would probably be Superman. I love it. I love it. Superman. No doubt it. about it. I love it. So this has been fun. You've had, this is so good. Like I, I was like, you could have ran this podcast because you told so many great pieces in that, that whole story that you were oh, telling sorry. us. I loved it. I loved it. And I love what you're doing. And you know, I, I keep hoping that at some point here, we're going to, you know, I always say, this too shall pass. We're going to we're gonna move forward and hopefully things will come back to some kind of normalcy and you'll be able to return. But I love that you're continuing to play piano. I play piano, nothing like you, but I, I took yeah. piano lessons and I can play piano. And, I, and, I, and my oldest daughter is very gifted. You know, I'm a music reader, but she's very gifted in that she can yeah. hear music and transpose that on the piano. So I think that is an incredible gift. And, and there's so many things that can be learned from, you know, being, I just think, musically inclined. She's This kid of mine, she's taught herself how to play the ukulele, the guitar, she plays played the bassoon in high school, yeah. so I'm I'm all for the music. I my my son's on a full scholarship for classical music at Loyola University here in New Orleans, as well as my daughter's on the track team. I'm, I'm proud of all my children. You know, I, I love it. But musically speaking, I, I need to get better. That's my mission. I, I need to one day uh, shake the hand of James Taylor. That's my favorite artist, That's him awesome. and Billy Joel. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. So, Tim, if our listeners wanted to learn a little bit more about what you're doing and all the things that, you know, your music, what you've got going on, where do they come find you at? Well, you can go to www.timbuie.com. If you think of the drink, Dram Bowie is timbuie.com. And also USA Dueling Pianos dot biz. USA Dueling Pianos. Dot biz. I'm not ashamed to admit it. That company's built off of patriotism uh, for all of our military men and women. That's what that whole company is. I love and it. That's just a fact. Yeah. I love it. You're awesome. And I'm so glad that we got to get you on here and chat with you today so we can learn a little bit more about you. I do want to say- I be more grateful. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say to our listeners, if you enjoy our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook, because of course we can't do this without you and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And with that, I want to say close with something, little little moment here for you guys. 
In all affairs of life, at every moment, we have a choice. The birth of an idea in your mind and the birth of a celestial star in distant space both arise from the same latent field of cosmic energy. All right, you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for California, Red